I think like even myself, like I feel like I had this like specific image of what that person yeah. was like. Like an and emo artist or like a goth artist. Yeah. And then I yeah. was like, those people literally paved the way for everything. <laughs> Like the people everyone thinks are weird, like five years later, everyone's doing it. And I like, I know that in my conscious brain, but it really took me until seeing people who like were maybe femme presenting or still liked wearing makeup Mm -hmm. or like still wanted to identify as lesbian and still were non-binary that I was like, oh, okay, other people are doing it. So I guess I can too, which is so backwards. But for me, that was really important. Welcome back to Queer Talk for season two. If you forgot, we are the number one podcast to connect you to all of your favorite queer creators and a space where we share our stories on all things queer related. And hey, if you're new listening to this, give us a follow on Spotify, subscribe on Apple Podcasts, and we are now streaming full video episodes on YouTube. So you can watch these episodes on your TV, phone, tablet, wherever you are tuning in. So be sure to hit that subscribe button. The link to watch is in the description. Guys, today we have a very special guest on. She's a podcast host herself. They're also a photographer, TikToker, aspiring lesbian TV personality, etc. You can find them on TikTok at you did this for why. Please welcome Emma Stern. Oh my gosh, that was so good. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. The energy. I was like, I'm ready. (laughs) That's my radio voice. Um, Yeah, it's a good radio voice. (laughs) I learned a lot from Alice Piazeki from The L Word. I'm currently binging it Mm -hmm. for the third time. I only ever watched the first three episodes when I first came out because it just felt like the right thing to do, but I never really got into it. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like it's kind of like the main thing people search right because it is Mm -hmm. called the l word and it just has a bunch of like beautiful women that are like centrally draped over one another Mm -hmm. so like i feel like all the gabies flock to it and it's like one of the first tv shows that's exclusively you know queer yeah so like i did i remember watching it so funny i remember watching it closeted i was a junior in high school or not junior high school i was a junior in college and it was on Netflix, but I had a family account, right? And so I couldn't, <laughs> God, I never watched a family account. The fuck? Of course. So I illegally downloaded all <laughs> of the seasons onto my, because I was really into like downloading illegally <laughs> at the time. So I was like, oh, I'm like college student. I'm poor. I'm going to download everything mm-hmm. illegally. But I did that specifically because I was closeted and I binged it all in like a week or two. Wow. Yeah whole new world <laughs> it really was and like I do have like pros and cons to it I know you haven't mm-hmm. watched the whole thing we don't have to get into it but like yeah I, they just look so free like they yeah. just look so free and unencumbered by like heteronormativity mm-hmm. and I I don't know like something about the essence that they gave off and a lot of those women are queer in real life those folks are queer in real life yeah. I think that and that exudes and the director and the creator is is queer so like I think I just love the essence of it more Yeah, than the actual show itself. That's how I felt about Skate Kitchen when I first saw it. I don't know if you've seen it, but... I haven't. It's so good. It's like this literal group of like female skaters were scouted by a random director on like a New York City subway. And oh, he wow. was like, I'm going to build a whole movie around you guys. And he did it. And um, a bunch of them are queer And it's literally just kind of following them around for like three months in the summer and just following around their skate life. And like Jaden Smith is in it for a little bit. But I remember watching that and being like, that's what I need. Like a gender non-conforming, like a group of friends that are girls who just like do whatever they want. And um, yeah. And like being queer isn't like the main thing. It's not like a crazy thing. It just happens to be a part of their persona. And I was like, that's so nice. Yeah, like to watch a TV show that is not about like the queer, you know, coming coming out. out. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, God. If I see another happiest season, I'm going to fucking rip my face off. I don't know what. Yeah, I'm like, we get it. It's hard. (laughs) Let's move on. (laughs) Yeah, and everyone does it and it's and it can be relatable to some aspects. But like, yeah, we need more things where queer people are just doing things. And happen to also be queer. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) They don't have to talk about it. It doesn't have to be the point of reference for the story plot yeah it's just there (laughs) yeah like there's a place for it there's a place for well taste like tasteful videos that show those things but it's not Mm. like the whole fucking you know like once you you know it's like what about after what about the next 50 years of your life what about all the tiny coming out things that you have to do after the initial big coming out like there's one hump but then there's it's like a roller coaster you have the you come out like every week (laughs) 
you got yeah. the big fucking huge scary you know mm-hmm. little, and you come down and then you have a bunch you have some loop-de-loops you got some little mm-hmm. corkscrews you got little tiny ones they're not as big mm-hmm. as the first one but you still have to do it yeah you gotta ride the ride until it ends. you gotta ride the ride and the movies <laughs> have to show it yeah <laughs> exactly exactly like nobody shows like coming out to your gynecologist or just like mm-hmm. coming out to a co each co-worker at every job you have until you die yeah you know what i mean Oh my gosh, I haven't had to do any of those things because I've been unemployed since I came out and <laughs> um, have not gone to a doctor. So I'm like, I'm just waiting. I just watch the TikToks and I'm like getting advice from them. I'm like, what to say <laughs> <laughs> to your doctor? It's not bad. I not have a male gynecologist, um, which I feel like I have a lot of like um, female friends that are like, really? You have a- that's like my nightmare. <laughs> yeah, that's what everybody says. Like, yeah. Everyone's like, oh my God. And I'm like, look, I had him since I was 16 because my mom put me on birth control when I was 16 because mm-hmm. I had like really bad acne. Mm-hmm. And like, God forbid, I wasn't having sex then I- <laughs> because mm-hmm. I was just, just really particular. Guy. I was so, yeah. I was so picky. Mm-hmm. Um, Responsible and picky. <laughs> yeah. I was really conscious. Yeah. I was an overachiever, Emma. Mm-hmm. I was, I had goals in my life. Yeah. No men, God. <laughs> but I just was always with him. Like, and he was a good, he's still like good. I've considered yeah. going to a different gynecologist just location wise. And also maybe just because it's a female, but honestly, he's been like super chill, but I did. I had to come out to him this summer because I oh go my every year and not, or no, it wasn't the summer. It was the summer before. Um, yeah, yeah. As summer before, because you know mm-hmm. the the age old question, like, oh, are you sexually active mm-hmm. and stuff? And I was like, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, he's like, oh. he's like, okay, are you using protection? And I was like, no. I was just like waiting for him yeah. to be like, why not? <laughs> You're like, this is my moment. This is my moment. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Like, uh, can I ask why not? And I was like, well, I'm gay now. <laughs> and he goes, oh, okay. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and that's okay, it. Okay. Okay. That was oh it. Gosh. I came out to my psychiatrist last week and cool. I, he was the last because I was like, I just don't want to be psychoanalyzed yet. I'm not ready for that. I'm not ready for him to look through my old files and be like, oh, this all makes sense now that I know she's gay. I was like, no. Um, but it was the same thing. I was like, all the build up, And then he was just like, all right. And I was like, okay. <laughs> But it is weird coming out to people who aren't like your close people. You're just like, oh. Yeah. But like you have to because they're your, the people that are like looking at your vagina and looking at your body and like, you know, trying to keep you healthy. So you kind of have Mm -hmm. to like say Keep them in the loop. Yeah. Which I think is hard for people who aren't, you know, 18 yet. And they have to, it's just like, well, do I hide it? Do I, Mm -hmm. you know, because like your parents can find out. But yeah, that's that stuff is crazy. Um, but for you, like when you first came out, you know, the big the big roller coaster drop mm-hmm. was that was that pretty recent? How long have you kind of been out? I came out in July. So, so pretty like recent. Six months I, ago. I, I'm like a baby. <laughs> I didn't want to like I didn't yeah, no, I am a baby. Like, I couldn't tell, but I was like, I feel like she's new, not just because mm. uh, just like the certain content. I mm. just remember I remember looking for that content and I even when I first got on TikTok like in like April I started posting some of that cuz I I'm not a gayby I consider myself a teen I'm mm-hmm. a teen gayby I'm a teen <laughs> I don't know um I've been out for a couple You're not like years. a vet but No yeah, I'm not you have a, a vet. couple years I'm not a vet I came out to myself in college but I didn't come out come out like come out to people and start dating until like geez end of uh, 2017 that's crazy so many people say that and so many of my close friends I have another close friend who came out during the pandemic more on social media um but she had been like kind of closeted and like had been even dating without even telling her friends that she was out um or that she knew she was gay and like I literally like it was all within like a one month span that I was like hmm maybe I like women and then I was like "Mm, maybe I would marry a woman then I was like maybe I wouldn't marry a man and then it was all within like a month and then I literally told like everyone I knew. I just like can't keep a secret. I was like, well, yeah. I might lose everyone in my life, but I am a blobber mouse. So. <laughs> that is crazy. You did it all in one month. Are you someone yeah. like when you're at the pool, do you dip your toe in and slowly get in or do you just fucking cannonball? No, I cannonball. Okay, yeah. that sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I was like, I can't. I can't just sit with this. Like this, I was like, 
losing my mind and it had only been like two weeks I was like how do people stay closeted for years it's like <laughs> I'm so blessed to be able to come out right now like yeah so what was yeah. that when during that month like what was that first thing that you're like oh fuck I'm not straight completely mm-hmm. okay well my first moment was I was like stuck at my mom's house for I think I went home for like three months at the start of the pandemic so I was like what am I gonna do right now yeah. <laughs> and so my roommate's American too and the border was about to close and so okay literally over one 24 hour period, we both like booked flights and just like left. And so I went home to live with my mom for three months and I was sitting in her basement every night where I am now (laughs) and I had nothing to do. And so I was like binge watching like all my favorite YouTube comfort videos. And my number one comfort video on YouTube was atypical Casey and Izzy compilations. And I was like, maybe we should talk about that. (laughs) And then I literally sat down and I was like, I'm not pushing this off. I felt like I'm probably bisexual my whole life, but I've just thought that's a problem for another day. And so I like took out my notes app on my phone and wrote a list of all the girls I'd ever had a crush on in my life from like birth to now to like validate myself. And I was like, okay, a straight girl wouldn't have over 30 girls I had crushes on. Like I'm not making this up. Yeah. But that was like kind of how I first was like, okay, we're we're ripping the bandaid off. Mm -hmm. We're admitting it to myself. And then I was like on dating apps for like a month. But I started seeing like a lot of my friends because I go to an art school. And so I started seeing mutual friends and stuff. And I was like, oh, my God, like someone's going to out me if I don't out myself. Yeah. And so then I just like told people. (laughs) Crazy. That's crazy. Everyone does it so differently. Yeah. So and and everyone does it at their own pace. Like because it took me literally so many years to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Like it was so fucking slow. So it was like so fun to hear you be like, yeah, a month I did this. And then I was like, (laughs) oh, shit, 30, 30 people that I have a crush on. Okay, might might be. Uh Uh Then you're like, okay, dating apps. Oh, uh, mutual friends. Okay, well, I got to come out now because I got to figure it out. That's Mm -hmm. so funny. That's so crazy. So like since then, like how has that journey been for you? Cause I feel like it's so new and like, I can tell by like your content and stuff, like you're very analytical, like you're very astute and like the observations, like where you're like comparing and contrasting and things like that. Yeah. So it's so nice to see like the fresh perspective of coming out because mm-hmm. you have a bunch of people in different timelines um, doing queer content. So I think I, I really gravitated to that stuff because I was like, it, it was like almost nostalgic for me to watch your mm-hmm. content. Like, oh, she's going through it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I remember it. I have yeah. big journals about it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that, like, I've always just, like, made content. And I never really made TikTok content before I came out. But I've, like, always, like, had my podcast, like you said. And I've always, like, posted a lot on Instagram. Like, always been friends with influencers. So it just, like, felt very intuitive to me to, like, try to figure out what was going on with me through TikTok. And I was like, oh, like, people – maybe I'll find people that relate to me because I felt like I was just going through stuff that none of my, at the time I only had straight friends and I was like, no one gets what's happening right now. I need to talk to people. Uh, So I think like a weird part of it was that like I was out on TikTok from like the day I was out to like my roommate and like even before I was out to like my family. Mm -hmm. And so like TikTok knew first as a lot of people I feel like say now. And then, yeah, just like, I think what's been so interesting about kind of coming out on TikTok and like talking about it as you're coming out is like people forget that I'm like a baby gay and I don't really know anything and so I've been like almost canceled a couple times for saying things where I'm like I genuinely didn't know I'm sorry like I literally just came out last weekend I didn't know that lesbians don't like that (laughs) yeah um but it is kind of like a weird thing I never thought that I would get any views so I was like oh I'm just like asking for help and now it's like yeah, like you said, like I'm only six months into being out and then people are like asking me for advice about coming out. And I'm like, that's not that's not where I'm at. But it's interesting. I'm like, it's a cool place to be. Well, I think like you have experience as much like let's say someone's in the closet, you have more experience than them. You know what I mean? Six months on them. So like even though you might not be a vet or you might not have been out for a few years or had, you know, um, relationships, WW relationships or queer relationships, mm-hmm. like you still have a voice and, and you yeah. still have, you still can give advice to your experience. Yeah. So I want to, I want to discourage your, <laughs> like you from doing any of that. If you speak like authentically and like from your experience, like you'll never like overextend or look like you're trying to talk about stuff that you don't know. You know yeah. what I mean? No one can tell you you didn't do something that you did. <laughs> exactly. And I yeah, think you do yeah. that. Like you, I love the observations that you do with like uh, the men that you've dated versus like women and things yeah. like that. 
because it's it's so true. Mm -hmm. Oh my (laughs) gosh, like the amount of fights I've gotten in with girls that I started dating just because I was like treating them like a boy. Yeah, out of control. They were like, (laughs) I'm not dumb. And I was like, sorry, I'm just used to that. Like, (laughs) I'm used to like not being like sexually or romantically attracted to my partner. So yeah, and spice it up with fights. Now I got to find something new. Like, (laughs) (laughs) this is the remix. Like, I don't know. I know. I literally remember like most of the guys that I dated were either guys that I wanted to be. It was a lot of the aspect was like wanting to be them. And if it wasn't Mm -hmm. wanting to be them, I don't know what it was. Like, I think I was trying to embody like certain aspects of the guys that I dated and also just like keeping up appearances. And there were like a couple of guys that I really truly did like, like on all Mm -hmm. levels but like when once I started dating women, I was like, oh, those all those levels come much quicker, much more intensely, and it's just more fulfilling. That's exactly <laughs> it. Yeah. Like no matter how much I thought I like loved boyfriends in the past, yeah. the idea of like living with one would like make me like visibly upset. I was like, oh my God, like <laughs> I'll have to like live with one forever. Like yeah. and so yeah, the day I was like, oh my God, I can live with a girl and it doesn't have to be my platonic roommate. Yeah. It was like changed my whole life. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it's super crazy. And like the whole, like, I, not that I had crazy relationships with men. I had like two six month relationships, like one, and I had a high school boyfriend and I had a college boyfriend. Hmm. And I just remember like saying like that I would date a, like a little bit and then be like, ah, oh, he's just not my type or like, oh, I just don't feel that zing, you know? Yeah. Like with dating men and just being like, why don't I like them? That's literally like my roommate night. It's so funny because like, since we've had a weekly podcast for two and a half years now, um, we just, a large part of it is just talking about our lives at the start. Like our personal update set category has just gotten longer and longer as we've gone over time. And it's so funny listening back to old episodes about dating And, um, she got out of a three-year relationship with a guy and then three months of healing. And then she went on two dates. And one of those guys now is like, like, she's like going to be engaged with him. And like, I see them getting married. And I was like, I literally got on 40 first dates this year. Like, how is it that the second guy you've gone on a date with is like the one and like out of these 40 amazing guys that I've gone on dates with, like, I hate them all. So yeah, I feel that. And then listening back to that part of the podcast, I'm like, oh my God, Emma, you sound so gay. Like, Yep. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Yep. All the memories. I think like, I just remember just like, yeah, like I just remember like the gay shit. Like if somebody would say that to me, I would be like, you're gay. You know, like when I yeah. was like, I just don't feel that attract. Like, I just don't feel that chemistry is what I would say. Not mm-hmm. attract. I would say, I'm just not feeling the chemistry. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I just don't feel like, and I couldn't understand why. Cause I would see like my roommates and my friends, like they would have their hoe phases and they would have the guys that they were super interested in. And it was like magnetic and like chemistry and like passion. And I'm like, am I just like demisexual? Maybe I need to be in love to mm-hmm. feel that. Maybe I'm fucking eight. I literally thought I was asexual. And then I was like, no, I'm not. Cause I felt that. So I was like, maybe I'm demisexual and I need to be in yeah. love. Yeah. Cause the only two guys that I really, really liked. I like one of them. I thought I was in love with high school love. And the other one I think yeah. I could have fallen in love with. Yeah. So it was my, my only frame of reference. And then yeah. literally like the first woman I ever dated, I was like, oh, that makes more sense. Literally. I was like, wait, I feel <laughs> like my only reference point of what love is. Like, that's what I felt on like my first date with a girl. And I was like, oh my God, am I in love with you? Or have I never been in love? Yep. <laughs> and I can't tell. Yep. <laughs> I still don't know. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Like I genuinely am like, am I in love with every girl I've ever talked to? <laughs> Probably. Like my repressed oh. ass. Like what was it like when you started dating women? You realized that like the dates were like super long. Yeah. It's like, oh my gosh, dates. <laughs> like I had heard like stereotypes Welcome. about it. Welcome. <laughs> That's crazy. No way. Like that's not like what dates are. And then yeah, like my first date with a girl, we had like a picnic. And then she was like, oh, well, we should probably go get coffee. And I was like, okay. And she's like, oh, we should probably grab a drink. I was like, yeah, we totally should. And then I think she like spent the night. And then the next day we went and got coffee. And then the like we ended up just hanging out for like an insane amount of time. And I was like, is this what it's like? And then the second girl I dated, it was the same thing. So I was like, oh, this is what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the dates are really long. So up until like maybe like a month or two ago, like the longest date or the shortest date I ever had was like four hours. And I mm-hmm. had a two hour date and my friends were literally like, 
did you hate each other? Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was, it wasn't the best date. I will, it's, yeah. it's probably the worst date I've been on. And it wasn't because like, she was like crazy or like anything like that. It was you just like, vibe. we didn't vibe super awkward. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I have a fucking podcast. I talk to strangers weekly. Like mm-hmm. it's not me. Yeah. I can tell you right now. I can talk to, I can talk to a fucking rock. You know what I yeah. mean? We'd have a great conversation. <laughs> like I just, I was like, man, I was like, mm-hmm. ah, okay. This isn't going to work <laughs> with a host of other red flags, but yeah. like she's, she's a cool person. It is what it is. Yeah. But I was like, man, I really wish I would have just stayed home. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh one of gosh. those. I feel that. And I feel like something else, like nobody told me, like, or I'd heard like jokes about it, but I never took it seriously. It was like how insular the queer community is. And at first it was just like the Toronto community for me, like where I live. And now I feel like it's like all of North America. Like, I just feel like I know everybody now, at least through someone. Like anytime I meet a girl, we have 10 mutuals on Instagram. And so I feel like it forced me to like be really like civil with my exes and like learn Mm -hmm. to be like nice to people and like to actually see them as a human being, not as like a monster when you break up with them. Because they're going to tell all your future girlfriends what you were like. That's been like a weird there. You're only a couple people from someone. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and I feel like it is like, you never want to leave bad blood in general. Like they say that, like, you know, when you have jobs, you never want to have bad blood between jobs and stuff like that. Cause you never know like when those, you know, you're going to burn bridges. Right. Yeah. But there's just some fucking people that you date that are just not supposed to be in your life. Like Mm -hmm. no contact. You're not supposed to be friends with them. I mean, I'm not friends with any of my exes, but I'm not like, I don't hate any of my exes. There's one that I just like truly just, I dislike, but I don't, Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say hate. It's a strong one. Yeah. More indifferent, but like, yeah, that's. Yeah. I got really lucky that the first girl I ever dated was very not a part of the queer community at all. She didn't have a single queer friend and she just had no interest in being a part of the queer community. Like all her friends were straight. She didn't like follow queer content. Like she wasn't even on gay tiktok she was on like straight tiktok even though she was gay and she was out to her friends but it was honestly it was hard because I didn't really get my like satisfying like entrance into the queer world yeah but I also felt like I got a clean slate because I was like oh she doesn't know anyone like (laughs) true yeah true I think yeah I mean the first woman I dated she was super into queer culture but like didn't Mm -hmm. like she had and she had a couple queer friends but it wasn't like a total immersion for me into, yeah. into anything. But like it did give me queer friends for the time being. But then I had to mm-hmm. make my own when we broke up. But like yeah. <laughs> it, it was nice to share queer culture and to share the different like, you know, because I was really when I first came out, I was a big into YouTube and the in the queer YouTubers. And mm-hmm. when I was in college and I was only out to myself, I was really big into BuzzFeed. Like mm-hmm. I love the BuzzFeed videos. BuzzFeed. Of that <laughs> yeah. 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 They were so um, good then. I miss that. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. And I'm actually friends with uh, a girl who worked at BuzzFeed now from TikTok. Oh my gosh. That's so, so crazy. crazy. Which is it's like weird when you're like, I love you. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. She wasn't mm-hmm. like one that I was super, like a super big fan of. She did a lot of more of the behind the scenes stuff, but she was mm-hmm. in some stuff. But it was funny because like, it truly is. You are truly like two people away from people yeah. that you never thought you'd be away from. And I think like doing this podcast, like, I'm like, I'm two people away from Cami Scott. I'm two people away from yeah. Sam Beverage. Like, I, if I really wanted to, like, you know, get those people on the podcast or, like, it, yeah. it seems like things are so far away, but they really aren't. They aren't once you're in it. <laughs> and it's so cool. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. So that's that's pretty neat. Um, Let's talk about your journey with your pronouns. Yeah. Because you're just doing it up. <laughs> 2020 was I was like, if coming I started. Out, <laughs> coming out. 2020 was sexual orientation and gender representation yeah I guess I'm very like a proactive person I guess like once I start something I can't really stop and so I never really I never ever ever considered my gender pronouns in my life like it never even occurred to me um and but I remember the first time I saw she they pronouns being used was Hunter Schaefer last year like from Euphoria okay um and like Jules from Euphoria and it was their bio on Instagram and I like remember googling it and being like what is she they what does that even mean and there was nothing like not even a reddit thread like there was not even an urban dictionary I was like oh okay no idea what you're talking about but that's cool yeah and then this summer suddenly like there were so many of my favorite tiktok lesbians were now she they and I was like okay there must be more now and so I started looking it up and I think I started thinking about it this summer but I was like no I literally just came out like let's just take a breath 
can yeah. we chill for five seconds? <laughs> um, and then like in like, November, I think is when I remember like the same thing happened where like before I came out um, as gay, my whole TikTok for you page was about coming out as gay. And I was like, that's so weird. Maybe I'm gay. And then I noticed the same thing. My whole for you page started to become about she, they pronouns or about being non-binary and like this whole like gender spectrum. And I was like, oh no, here we go again. Like, there's <laughs> nothing I can do now. TikTok yeah. has taken me and like, I have to just follow the journey. Yeah. And then, yeah, I ended up like a few creators who I really like admire, who I also am now mutuals with, which is so cool. have like commented and like have sent me resources for like articles to read if you're thinking about it. And then once I kind of did that, it was the same thing where like the moment I was like sure of myself, I had to tell everyone. Yep. I get <laughs> I that. I was like, this is what it is. <laughs> yeah. I think that's awesome. Yeah, I did. I have seen a lot of people start to um, experiment with with they, them pronouns. And I've seen yeah. a lot of people with she, they pronouns. And I've always wondered, because like, if I can't tell from like their content, because I thought mm-hmm. about it too. I was like, man, like, I, I wouldn't mind being called they, them. Like, it wouldn't be something yeah. that I would be like, I'm uncomfy by it, which is, I yeah. think it's crazy because I feel like no one's uncomfy by That they, should them. be the natural, yeah. <laughs> that should be the default. Like, if yeah. at any time cis yeah. like even cis straight people like if you're like oh yeah like they're over there you know what I mean like themselves so, like no no yeah. one would be like I'm a she I'm a you know no one would yeah, say that it's so true so, and so like, many cultures don't even have like he or she pronouns like so many cultures just re- refer, refer to everyone as like one thing which is awesome and yeah there's like be. there's like a lot of different like indigenous languages I've been seeing on TikTok that are so cool where they just refer to like anything that's like alive so like trees people whatever are just like the same descriptive word and so like women men trees everyone has the same one it's just like rocks that don't have that one and so I was like that's such a cool mindset it's like we're not even thinking about your gender when we're talking about you we're just thinking about the fact that you are breathing you know what the rocks are gonna rise up though they're gonna be the rocks will rise up this is bullshit we deserve representation the next tiktok movement I wouldn't be (laughs) phased. rocks versus wave yeah Um. (laughs) Oh man. Um, I think that's really interesting. I think indigenous, indigenous cultures, not that I've like, I have a lot of research and experience on it, but I mean, like they have really incorporated, you know, people who are not on the gender binary, people who are trans, those kind of things. Like they just, it's a part of the culture and it's, it wouldn't be the culture without them. Like they're an integral part of the culture. And yeah. And it's, it's so sad that indigenous populations have been pillaged and plundered and by, you know, colonization and things like that, because I feel like they were more connected with nature than ever, more about yeah. oneness and wholeness. Like I am the same person as this person and this like, tree. They really had it together. They really yeah. had it together. <laughs> like, yeah. No, it's so true. It's so crazy. Yeah. Just how like not normal. And I think like even myself, like I always like, this is going to sound bad, but like, I think it's still relevant is that like I always looked at people who were like non-binary or used any sort of they them pronouns as like the quirky weird person like the person who Mm -hmm. like shopped at hot topic like I feel like I had a person (laughs) in mind like had the short neon hair maybe like you know like I feel like I had this like specific image of what that person was like like an emo artist or like a goth artist yeah and then I was like I'm like those people literally paved the way for everything (laughs) like the people everyone thinks are weird, like five years later, everyone's doing it. And I like, I know that in my conscious brain, but um, it took me a while. And it really took me until seeing people who like, were maybe femme presenting or still liked wearing makeup or Mm -hmm. like, still wanted to identify as lesbian or queer or whatever it may be, and still were non binary that I was like, Oh, okay, other people are doing it. So I guess I can too, which is so backwards. But um, yeah, for me, that was really important. That's awesome. I think that's super cool. Yeah. I think everyone's different on the, like, I have no problem with like someone referring to me as they, but I I don't think I would pick it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I want to be like, if someone asked me, she or they, I'd be like, oh yeah, like she, her. Yeah. If someone called me, they, them, I would be fine with it. I wouldn't have any problems with it. But I mean, some people want to be called both. Like I have a friend who likes using both in, in conjunction, like in sentences Mm -hmm. and different things. And they really like when I use they a lot more because Mm -hmm. they don't get that a lot yeah so like that's that was super eye-opening for me is like Mm -hmm. using them in the same sentence or using them you know like in the same paragraph when you're when you're talking about someone which is cool yeah (laughs) that's been cool (laughs) that's cool so would you consider yourself non-binary or is that still a journey that you're going on 
I mean, it's been like a month, so I would say it's still a journey I'm going yeah. on, but um, I think kind of similar to, I think a lot of um, like lesbian women go through this where when you first start thinking about women, like I know I was like, oh, I could kiss a girl, but I would never marry one. Yep. Oh, I would like date a girl, but I'll still marry a guy. And then like yep. it slowly flips. I feel like that's kind of the same process that I'm going on where right mm-hmm. I started and I was like, oh, well, like I relate inherently to the experiences of non-binary people, but you can just call me she. And then yeah. like, yeah. that's I don't relate to like the pronouns, you know? And I feel like now I'm starting to kind of when I'm getting more comfortable, I'm like, okay, like I actually like the pronouns being mixed or whatever. And like, who knows if that'll go further or not, but it does feel like that same journey of like getting comfortable with it to figure out what your boundary is. Like you kind of have to go to the very yeah. edge to figure out. But you really do. It's fun. You really do. Yeah. I think that's really cool. I really commend you for being able to talk about your experiences while you're experiencing them. Cause a lot of people can't mm-hmm. do that specifically me. I mm-hmm. can't do that at all. Like the stuff that I talk about is as happened in the past, but I wish that I could have, like when I was going through it, like chrono chronicled it as it was, yeah. but I like, didn't have that self-confidence or the self-assurance that I was right or wrong. And what I was, or I was right. in what I was doing, I was afraid mm-hmm. that like, what if I come on and, and chronicle this experience through content creation? And it turns out that I'm straight, you know what I mean? Cause you <laughs> like, you know, cause I still had in the back of my head, like, what if this is all like a lie or what if this is this and this, and you're not really gay and you're just making a big show, like all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I, I still I wake up sometimes face. and think that I'm like, yeah am I making this up? Do I even like women? Then I'm like, no, we're good. We're good. We do. (laughs) Yep. So I think that's really cool. Like not a lot of people can do that while they're going through something as, I mean, it's a huge, it's a huge undertaking when you come out. Um, and it Uh varies for everyone, but I think that's super cool. I think that's why I'm like super intrigued. Cause like, I'm going to like watch and see like what happens. Cause I think it's life, you know? Yeah. I feel like I just got like, so privileged in so many ways that like, first of all, like my whole family, even like my grandparents were just like so accepting. Um, and so that already kind of like took a lot of pressure off where I felt more comfortable being who I am online. And then also um, like growing up, my mom was like a single mom and she was a social worker. And so there was just like a lot. And I grew up in a house full of women um, who were just all like bosses in their own way. And so I feel like I just grew up around people who were like very good at communicating and who were very insightful and like worked with therapists or were therapists. And then like with the whole social work thing growing up, like my mom's friends would be sitting around talking about queer people all the time and like their experiences like that just happened to be with their work. And so I felt already more, I feel like I was more comfortable and more established than a lot of people. Like a lot of my friends who grew up religious and couldn't even talk about it. And so Mm -hmm. for me, I'm like, ah, I can talk about it while I go because I've always just talked about things like this. And yeah. So. It fast tracked it. Yeah. You. It did fast um, track it to already have like a safe space. Like so many people don't have it. So but honestly, that's good because then people mm-hmm. can see you chronicling your stuff. And then they yeah. get, like, if I, I felt like if I would have seen like someone as they were going through it, you know, like Shannon Beveridge was like one of the main people that did that. Like she did yeah. it as she was doing it, but I watched those things in retrospect. I wouldn't, didn't yeah. watch them in real time. So like, if I had seen like someone doing it in real time, it probably would have given me more confidence to do it. So like your plate, like to be able to be so privileged, like you have a place in your content yeah. that can help people like that. Yay, that's the goal. (laughs) Awesome. But yeah, that is that is super cool. Another thing that I saw, I saw like a random um TikTok of yours the other day, and you were talking about auditioning for a lesbian dating (laughs) reality show. Like, what is this? I swear to God, I Uh like saw that and I was like, what the fuck is this? Because like I have only seen like you know, are you the one where it had the queer mm-hmm. season mm-hmm. and, you know, there's like the gay one with the gay man one, which is fire Island or some shit like that. Yeah. And so I was like, what the fuck is she talking about? Like I was like reading the comments, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. True. <laughs> especially a girl commented on it and was like another like TikToker, And she was like, Oh my God, they literally just hit me up too. Like I'm in a relationship. So I couldn't do it. I ended up not being able to go because of like rules changed. And so I couldn't work in the States because I'm Canadian. So gotcha. I won't be on it. Oh. But now I feel like I'm seeing like every single TikToker on it, like talking about it. And like, people aren't saying like specifically <clears throat> what it is. I don't, they didn't tell us we couldn't say anything, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Like a, a HBO, I think I can say it's HBO An HBO producer reached out to me oh, telling awesome. me that essentially they're, they're doing some sort of dating show and they want it to be very, um, 
gender and sexuality like inclusive. I think there's going to be like bisexual men, bisexual women, gay women, gay men, and oh, everyone's amazing. just in like one dating pool together. So there's like a lot of fluidity that's from so what cool. I know. And I think it's coming out like in the summer um, or maybe wow. next, I don't know, maybe next year, but yeah. either way, uh, very exciting. I'm so excited to see what they do. I've seen like a few other content creators talk about how they've been like reached out to but if you're American and gay and single I would try to I would try to get on it I think man I want to get on that shit yeah are you American gay and single I'm American gay and single I saw that and I was like that is so neat because I like had never seen anything like I never thought about like being on a reality show like it wasn't something that crossed my mind but I'm like shit like I do all of this like I feel like that would be so much fun but that would be so much fun to to be a summer camp but on tv Summer camp is gay. <laughs> Queer. It's like and band gay. camp and theater camp like, all in one. It's the dream. It's actually the dream. I know. And my dream has been to be on a reality show my whole life. Since I was like 14, I was so sad. I've been tr- uh, auditioning for The Bachelor until obviously this year. Yeah. Every year I've been doing the full audition process since That's I awesome. turned 18. Um, the Big Brother, um, survive like I've auditioned for all of them but wow. no one wants me but I really want to be on a reality show so if anyone hey, listening it's wants to cast up, me it's gearing up for something you're gearing up yeah. for something you're gonna be on one mm-hmm. like you just want to make out with someone on t- long like broadcast TV. yeah and you're determined and you if you've yeah. done it before you know the tips and kind of tricks mm-hmm. of like of doing it even if you haven't been like yeah test it yet you know what I mean dream dare to dream (laughs) I believe in you I believe in you you. (laughs) and if I get on I will vouch for you I'm gonna be like my friend Emma Stern like you gotta send her her a green card get her a fucking green card literally they were like can someone get you a green card I was like no (laughs) I wish I know I was like oh maybe I can get married to get a green card to be on the show and then I was like well I probably can't get married and then be on a dating show in the same month yeah hbo but, makes sense though hbo or showtime or yeah, mtv both, yeah or, like those very queer yeah i would love yeah. to see a queer bachelor bachelorette but like i did some research on it and like it would just be hard because you'd be putting queer people in boxes and like subjecting yeah. them to heterosexual norms and yeah. so like i don't know if i'd want to see and all the people in the house like all the contestants would have the opportunity to date you know yeah, so then they'd be fucking each other. So like, it would be so. <laughs> no one would want to date the Bachelorette. Yeah, like, it would be bad. Yeah, but like, and are you the one? I mean, was great because they were like encouraged to do that because they were trying to find their match. Mm-hmm. So like, it made sense under those circumstances. But like, yeah, I could. The Bachelorette would be like queer people would be so mad, like madder than like happiest season mm-hmm. coming out because it would mm-hmm. be literally like oh, I have only preferences for femmes. Then you have like a bunch of butches that are doing each other and a bunch of femmes and it's like the 19 fucking 50s. It would be <sighs> like an underground dance. Like, <laughs> Yeah, they might have like uh, like one like non-binary person, like one like trans person that's like- But they're not going to make it far. They're just like the token they're like, into, diversity. They're like local color, yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, but dare to it's dream. Like Love Island, but gay. <laughs> Yes, yeah, seriously. Dream. There was yeah. an SNL. I don't know if you're a big an SNL fan, but like they did a parody on like Fire Island where they just made like lesbians and they called it something, but it was like basically just like these lesbian moms in their 30s with like their kids from like home water birth. It's like Kate McKinnon's in it. Oh my um, god. They all like sing and chant and like eat cheese plates. It's like the funniest shit ever. <laughs> I'm like, that sounds really nice. <laughs> it honestly does, but there's like I'm no like, like crazy <laughs> promiscuous, like but like you know, because it's like that stereotype of like gay men as being like you know promiscuous the promiscuous and ones shit. and the I'm like gay women are cool. way more pr- promiscuous it's just oh, yeah. everything's so much faster they'll like sleep with 10 people and then they'll fall in love and get married like all within one month yeah whereas gay men it's like they sleep with 10 people over 10 months you know like yeah we're just like on hyper we're just boom 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 very efficient <laughs> very efficient people women are very efficient because you get through things faster if you're talking because like women yeah. are verbal so you're constantly talking so you're you're getting through like I swear to god I had a year and a half relationship it felt like a six-year relationship yeah you, you know talk I mean? so that's so true like we're having 10 yeah. conversations for every one conversation I was having with a straight man like <laughs> yeah so like yeah. it like does speed up so I feel like yeah. I don't know like I guess like I don't know if this sounds bad but like I, I've seen people who like, you know, move in after a few months. And I think that's mm-hmm. maybe that's just my avoided attachment and tendencies where I'm just like, oh, oh my God, like just four months. But like, I know four months is like a year. 
in, in losing year time. It's sense. true. We have a different calendar. Like <laughs> it still makes me want to like cringe a little bit, but I'm like, mm-hmm. I get it though. Like I understand. I understand where that's coming from. Yeah. Oh my God. With attachment styles, literally my roommate was roasting me because yes. I've always had an anxious attachment style. And so I've already always wanted to like move faster than all the guys that I've dated. And now she was like, this is a recipe for disaster because finally you're in a world where everyone's like, oh, anxious attachment style is like industry standard. Like that's normal here. <laughs> and so yeah. now I have to like be the tough one. <laughs> like not telling a girl you love her after like two weeks is like <laughs> being like really emotionally mature and like I'm really thriving. Yeah. <laughs> Bucket list, not tell the girl I've been dating that I love her just yet. Yeah, literally. Make I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm doing so good. <laughs> like actually mean it before you say it. I've been really getting into attachment styles and I keep getting them up on my profile. I have a couple people. There's one person or there's a couple people that I really like to watch. Um, but like I was super avoidant, especially like before I dated women, I was just like off the mm-hmm. charts, like with everyone, like family, friends, like no one knew what was going on with me ever. Yeah. And then I came out and I became so much more open and vulnerable, Mm -hmm. but still with relationships, I was still like more avoidant. And it wasn't until I got out of like my like long-term relationship that I started becoming like, it started like kind of fading away, but I started going from, I went from avoidant to anxious. I went from one end to the other, which was a nightmare. I'm going to avoidant. I feel it right now. I'm going from anxious to avoidant lately. I did. No. And I think COVID made it worse. I think Mm -hmm. COVID like- not that I think I would have had the switch no matter what, mm-hmm. like from that to that. But like, yeah, we just you got to cling to shit when you get it now. Like, <laughs> yeah. And I and I think the person that the person I was with was way more avoidant than I was. So I think that's why she was like off the fucking charts. Yeah, um, that's so true. Whoever you're yeah. with, you end up being the the opposite. It's like yeah. if you know, have you watched Modern Family? <clears throat> I have. Yeah. Okay. Well, basically I've always referenced my love life as like Claire and Phil, which are like the parents and Claire's like the serious one who gets shit done. And then Phil's like the fun, happy go lucky, like puppy. Mm -hmm. And I always said that I wanted to marry a Phil. And then recently I finally discovered that I want to marry a Claire so that I can be the Phil because you can't have two. And if I date someone who's like a puppy, I'm going to end up being like serious and boring. So I need to date (laughs) someone who wants to be the serious one so that I can like just like j- like dig around you know or you can look at it as like sun and moon right yeah like yeah the bubbly a- and the brooding you know yeah. not necessarily boring but they might be more artistic and more like yeah. feelings and introspective <laughs> yeah. yeah like a, you can be the one that's like super bubbly but you can be like maybe the more serious one and then you can have someone who's like more broody but like the more sentimental like or, yeah like, you know that's so one. true so many Whatever things <laughs> But yeah, attachment styles are crazy. I didn't realize how avoidant I was and how emotionally unavailable that I was to like everyone. And then and then I was able to kind of break out of it a little bit, but I was with a really anxious person, like a really anxious person. Mm-hmm. So I became like more avoidant and then I just yeah. went, went super anxious, which was not fun. So now I get <laughs> it. I understand how she felt. And that's, that's the worst when you finally thing. actually understand the other person. You're like, I wasn't just like perfect. Like, yeah, I never was understood into this. Like, yeah, I never understood like feeling, you know, walking on eggshells and feeling like you were doing something wrong and like being physically ill. Like, I've never had, I've never been in a point where I was like physically like thought I was gonna throw up from like emotional stuff. Oh and I was gosh. like, this is some shit. But it was nice perspective because I'm like, yeah. now I understand. Like, now everyone I get it. should be on both ends at one point. <laughs> you really should. You should be broken up with. You should be heartbroken. You should break hearts. Yeah. You know, you gotta do it all. You got to do it all. You got to be because then you have more perspective and then you have more empathy. I feel like I have so much empathy after coming out of COVID yeah. more than I've ever had in my whole life. Yeah. I'm like, I'm I cry so at patient. everything now. <laughs> it's, it's, so, it's the floodgates. I mean, are I always did, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't. I really didn't. I compartmentalized everything. But now I COVID cry at everything. Down. Everything. I saw a Gerber commercial. Cried. Cried oh at it. The baby was too cute. <laughs> It was too cute. Baby it's cried. like 26 years of emotion just coming out all in one year. <laughs> <laughs> it really is though. Like it is like it's not like built up. That's funny stuff. Funny stuff. <laughs> Let's go to our questions with the queers. Guys, if you don't remember, this is the part of the podcast where we answer um, your questions on life, love, happiness that we probably have no business trying to answer. So we're unqualified. Mm-hmm. 
I love giving unsolicited advice more than anything in the world. Sweet. <laughs> Do you like getting roasted in the comments for it? <laughs> yes, I've accepted that too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this one is from Jocelyn. They're 24. Uh, they're from Phoenix and they write, how do you go about being with a woman for the first time and having the talk about being inexperienced? Oh my gosh. This is funny because I was just, I was live, I think last night with one of my friends who's also kind of recently come out and we both had like completely opposite experience. Hers was like, just pretended that she had experience and she just never told the girl to this day that she was like the first girl okay, she was with. All right. And I was like over communicator. I was like, let me tell you everything. <laughs> let me tell you my life story. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's, that's hard. It's just like awkward. Yeah. The first woman I was with was also, it was also her first too. So it was both of our first. So it kind of took the pressure off. Yeah. Um, but I was on your end where it was like very communicative, mm-hmm. like very much like we both knew, but I think I went into it and it's normally not, I'm normally not someone who jumps in and goes head first, but I really was like, I was like, I've been preparing for this for years now. Yeah. <laughs> like I am so fucking ready. Like I was yeah. like, I didn't even care if I don't know what I'm doing because she doesn't yeah. fucking know either. You know what I you mean? You can be so embarrassed like, tomorrow, but like just have fun today. <laughs> And, and that's something that I've talked about on this podcast, like those little things are fun. Like they build intimacy, like the little oops and the, the laughs yeah. and like the awkwardness. It doesn't have to be awkward if you don't make it awkward. You know what I mean? That's like, exactly right. Like I wouldn't want to have sex with someone where it wasn't awkward, but we didn't laugh about it. Like yeah. if it was fully like if everything went smooth, I'd be like, mm, <laughs> this isn't fun. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, there's sometimes you can be on X games mode. You can be, yeah. and there, and that's like an anomaly. I've had X games mode stuff for sure. Yeah. But yeah. like, I think As you, you should you build relationships <laughs> with the, like the oops and the, and you're figuring out someone's body and it's like, yeah. everyone is like vulnerable and open to communication. It can be a huge building experience. And so like my first time was that like, it was very, mm-hmm. like very soft and like cute, yeah. and, like communicative and like, you know, we're just figuring out these body bodies. Like I remember like, you know, the first time that we had sex versus like, you know, months in and the differences that come mm-hmm. with experience and getting to know someone really, really well and being mm-hmm. in love with someone and, and those kind of things. And I think you should just enjoy the experience. And like, if you're wanting to have a talk about being an experience, I think you should just be very honest. If you really like them and they really like you, like that stuff doesn't matter. I think that, okay, something that nobody talks about when girls first start seeing each other is, like, whether or not you have a conversation beforehand about, like, being, like, a top, a bottom, a switch, like, Mm -hmm. what the T is with that. And I know that those are kind of whatever, like, outdated-ish terms, but they're not. And, like, the first – like, I like to – at first – I was, I assumed I was a bottom. So I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> Whatever. I'll just sit, I'll just sit back and observe. Take, take me. <laughs> I was like, let me just like, like watch before I play. And so that was kind of my assumption. But the first girl I dated was like essentially like a stone top. And so okay. I really didn't get any experience, like actually like on the other side. And so I feel like that's something that would have been good to know beforehand, because then the, mm-hmm. that kind of like tainted my experience of coming to the queer world whereas like the second girl I was with was like very much on the same page as me of being like a pretty much like just like a switch like up for anything um and then I've also had friends who have dated girls who like exclusively like bottom for the most part Mm -hmm. and so and then that didn't really work with them and I'm like wow wouldn't you rather know before you fall in love with someone or like before your first time because I like hooked up with girls and they tell me afterwards like I never like to like receive um I let you do it just to be nice but I don't really want that. And I was like, don't let uh, me do it then. Like, yeah, because then it um, makes you feel uncomfy because you're like, I was doing something that you didn't like. Yeah, didn't like know. you kind of told me. Like, <laughs> I, yeah. I've had those where I, and then I feel bad. I feel gross. Like, I'm like, mm-hmm. oh my God, I was touching you. You didn't want me to. Like, I now yeah. I feel disgusting because like, yeah. that's not something I like. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, it's so true. So I feel like maybe, I don't know, your first time it's so awkward to talk about so many things. Yeah. But I feel like the first time with a new person, it's, Maybe after the first time you like talk about it, you know, yeah. like yeah, rip the bandaid off because yeah. that's kind of important. Like in male female relationships, there's already like this pre established like gender dynamic. Mm-hmm. Whereas with like women, it's like every man for himself, you know? It's yeah. I think whole new world. For understanding though, you know what I mean? That's and true. Like, They're really nice every time you do say something. Yeah. 
And so I, I think that it's easier to, to be inexperienced when it comes to that. And I also think like some women are into it. Like they really like they're into the whole inexperienced thing. That's like a, a huge turn on. And some people it just, it is what it is, you know? Yeah. But I think being upfront is the best case scenario. And I think like a lot of, some things do come naturally. I would say mm-hmm. not everything you're, you're getting to know a new person's body every time you have sex with someone. Yeah. So like, I feel like there are like basics that you like know and can like kind of understand, yeah. but then everyone has little nuances and things that they like and things that are neutral and things that they don't like. And that yeah. comes with time, but communication is like very, very key to. Yeah. To, to that be, was like know. the biggest thing I was shocked about. Like, and I would tell my like roommate who is straight and we do our podcast together. We've been best friends for years and kind of going through this process and um, voicing all of my feelings to her. And I was like, a man has like never like talked about sex during sex with me. Like for men, for the most part, obviously I'm not going to stereotype all of them, but in my experience with men, like they would, it, they would be very offended if you start like doing, con- if, give any sort of constructive criticism or you're like, okay, let's mix things up. Like it kind of kills the mood for them. Whereas with women, that's like, ideal like ideally it's like you're giving tutorials and you're like yeah you're like being very constant check-ins and I'm like why is this the most beautiful thing like we're so nice and understanding and like take a two-hour break just to talk about your feelings and then carry on yeah yeah and I think it's just fragile masculinity like it's like Mm -hmm. fragile ego like they should already know what they're doing because like oh bros are going so good at sex I fuck so many like yeah women blah 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 And like, I think that that's how they grow up with it. So I don't necessarily like fault everyone. Like, I'm not saying it's all their fault. They're pieces of shit. Like they think they're supposed to know when they don't even have the anatomy. Whereas women, we already are like, we know that there's always nuances and differences and we have the same parts necessarily. Not everyone, not every woman has the same, same parts and not every person who has the same parts as you as a woman, but yeah, you know, but I know you mean, yeah, yeah. Just want to like, (laughs) <laughs> yeah but it is it is crazy just like the switch of yeah like the the culture and the community and just like how people who were raised in like female communities in any capacity like are just so much more comfortable talking about yeah. things it's so nice it's so refreshing I was like I thought that I was like an over communicator with men and then the second I was with women I was like oh I'm like the closed off awkward one now and that was so <laughs> weird I was like what I was like oh, I'm not the turntables <laughs> literally I was like I don't even know <laughs> when I think back to like the like men talking in the bedroom it was like literally the only thing I can remember <laughs> is like this one guy was like I really like to make I I really like to have women go first you know what I mean like it really is a turn on yeah and then and then and like that was the first time that anyone had done that to me and like and so like obviously like he went down to me or whatever and it was like all right but it was like too much but at the time I didn't have the confidence and no wherewithal to be like this 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 (laughs) and then at the like after a while he was like did you come (laughs) <laughs> and really? I just said yeah <laughs> yeah oh my gosh because if you say no he's gonna feel bad or he's gonna keep going you're like no I don't want that yeah I mean now I wouldn't do that I mean I, I will say yeah. I have done that with some women where I just because I don't want to like hurt their feelings it's yeah. not about hurting their egos like it's about hurting their I don't want to hurt their feelings because it yeah. wasn't about <laughs> them you know what I mean they're doing a great job yeah you know sometimes it just is not about the the journey yeah. but uh it's not about the destination it's all about the journey not the destination exactly I will say I I there was one point where I was like I have never lied about that but like I actually have <laughs> <laughs> I feel that and it, it's not because of them it's it, it yeah. was more because of me I literally talked to my friends about this and I'm like I didn't realize like I think because with men like I was just like not attracted to them at all but I thought I was supposed to be so I was like the promiscuous friend like I slept with lots of men Cause yeah. I was like, Oh, maybe I'll find the right one. Yeah. Um, let me just and fuck so a like, bunch of them. One of them will turn. One of them, one will, of them will be fine. And then I realized like I had been faking it for like three years consistently. Cause like whenever I just was like, okay, I would like to leave this situation. I was like, Oh, that's the default. Like, yeah. and so I had been faking it for so long that I'm still like to this day, like have to catch myself. And I'm like, I don't even know if I'm faking it or not with girls. And so yeah. it is so interesting. Cause girls, like they read, they see right through it though. Yeah. They're like, this is not a performance. You can <laughs> chill. And I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. you have to and be like authentic and vulnerable. Or you're in your head. They fucking know. They know. Like you have to be vulnerable and real yeah. in yourself. And like, that's 
amazing, but it's also yeah. kind of scary. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it can be intrusive if you're not ready for it and open. For yeah. It. And I've had yeah. those times where I've done that to other people where I've been like, Hey, are you okay? Hey, is this? And it's I can tell like they weren't ready. Like they weren't ready for me to say that or like, yeah. and I've had people like that have done that to me where I was like, Oh fuck. Like I have to talk right now. <laughs> now like, I have to lie or I have yeah. to say something that I'm not or like, like, it's we're over. not like yeah. we're not a relationship and now I have to like talk I, and now it's just, yeah, there's just yeah. all this like that goes into it. The but. pros and cons of being over communicators versus under communicators. Yeah. And the subtle yeah. little things like women notice everything, you know what I mean? <laughs> and we know that because I notice everything. You notice everything. So like, yeah, they're going to notice too. They're like the, <laughs> what are you thinking? Like that yeah. always is the thing for yeah. me. Like I was with a couple, I was with like one person like briefly and they were like, what are you thinking about? Like, what are you thinking about? And I'm like, oh shit. I I'm like, I have, to th- I have to come up with something. <laughs> what well, am I like if you about? don't want to, like so, most of the time yeah. I would say what was on my mind, but then there's, you know, and then it's like, but yeah. it's like, they know, like they know. They that know. Happening. And yeah. I know, I'm, cause I've done that to people when I was in my anxious phase. Yeah. I would, there was this one person I was in, I would call it a situation ship because it was mm-hmm. not a relationship. Mm-hmm. And it was never going to be one. Yeah. Um, and I would say like, what are you thinking about? And I could, I knew that she was fucking lying. Like I mm-hmm. fucking knew it. Yeah. In hindsight, you know, yeah. when I had yeah. the, the goggles off, but yeah. intuition, it's, it's women intuition. Intuition, intuition. Yeah. Intuition's crazy. I'm just not um, used to it being used back on me. That's oh, yeah. like the weird part. Literally. You're like, oh, what? You have Literally. the same powers as me? Yep. <laughs> Well, let's go to the lightning round. We'll finish it okay. out. Do you want to answer some questions really, really fast? Sure. Okay. King Princess or Kailani? Uh, Kailani. Okay. Janelle Monet or Tegan and Sarah? Uh, Tegan and Sarah. Ooh. Haley Kyoko or Girl in Red? A uh, Girl in Red. <laughs> okay. Beanies or snapbacks? Beanies. Jean jackets or flannels? Uh, jean jackets. Giving presents or getting presents? Giving presents. Coffee or tea? Tea. Oh, yeah. No one says that. I have, like, that. really strong opinions about all of these, too. Like, I hate the other one and all of these options. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is actually really easy. <laughs> Kaylee Kyoko? Fuck that girl. King Princess? I don't like Kaylee Kyoko. I hate King Princess. <laughs> I love – I'm not a huge Kaylee fan, but I do love hmm. King Princess. I love – I don't know why. I, like I style, just, like – The rocker style. I, I think I'm too I'm late rock. to the game. <laughs> I get that. I'm a big tea fan. So most people wow. say coffee because it's America and everyone drinks coffee. Yeah. In Western Westerners, everyone drinks coffee. Yeah, I'm a fucking tea. Person. It just kind of grosses me out. I don't know. I like coffee. I like tea. I don't like coffee. <laughs> What's your favorite tea? Okay, well my favorite tea is like a chai, but tea. if I'm not having chai, I'm having like mint tea or something like chill. Nice. What I about you? Tea in bed or like yeah. chamomile tea. But yeah, I'll do black tea or green tea in the morning. Yeah kind of my I thing need, like the caffeine but <laughs> the when caffeine, I go but not the coffee, coffee shop I'll get a chai tea latte yeah it just feels yeah. like the right thing to say <laughs> fancy and I like yeah you know, I like make sure I dress like I'm a fucking main character when I go yeah I'm like chai yeah. tea latte with almond milk thank you I'm lactose free <laughs> Yeah, I do oat milk, but... <laughs> oh, oat milk, okay. <laughs> on, ne- on next level. Oat milk is the new almond milk, I guess. Oat milk's the new almond milk. Save the water. Favorite queer movie of all time? Bold choice, but Debs. <laughs> okay, I've never I seen it. I love Debs. Oh no my gosh, it's so good. said that. I have asked this question so many times, no one's ever really? said Debs. Okay, I, what I love about Debs is that the main character, without spoiling it... Um, she just is gay and this is the early 2000s but she just is gay and she's like talking about going on a date with a girl and her guy friend is like you need to get back out there like you and your girlfriend broke up like two years ago and they never address the fact that she's gay and none of the plot has to do with people being upset about a gay relationship they're just upset about those two people being in a relationship yeah and so I was like oh this is so beautiful and everyone's hot so (laughs) this is so beautiful and everyone's hot everyone's hot (laughs) yeah (laughs) that's perfect are you the gay that squishes the bugs? Mm, no. I'd love to be. I'd yeah. love to be. And I like to exude that energy, but not, not in practice. We aspire to squish <laughs> or, or dispose of them in an equal uh-huh. friendly way. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Last question. Last song you listen to on repeat. King Princess, right? Hundred <laughs> percent. Um, <laughs> I've been listening to any TikTok song. Right now I'm listening to that song Babushka. Okay. I don't know if you've heard it, but it's really know. good vibes. It's like an 80s rock pop song. 
okay. that I've been seeing on TikTok a lot. And uh, I'll have to check it out. It just has like really good energy. Like if you just want to like feel like really excited, it's a good song. <laughs> I do go on Spotify and I look at like the TikTok. The of, TikTok, like, I look at alt TikTok. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I really do because it has really yeah. good it has really good music on it. it. Really does. They do, yeah. That is awesome. Well, thank you so much for being right. on this podcast, Emma. Um, if you want to check out yeah. more about them you can find them at you did this for why on tiktok Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. what is your instagram it's annoying it's e dot m m a dot a okay emma with some dots dots. (laughs) yeah Um, and as always you can find me on all platforms at brie logan if you enjoyed this episode please subscribe where you're listening and check out our full video episodes on youtube with the link in the description that is it for this episode my queers be you be queer stay safe We'll see you on the next episode.